Welcome to March's Squadron 42 development report. Let's talk about the latest progress made across the campaign, including Buddy AI, Space Mines, and Augmented Reality Tech. Let's get right to it. First, we will have a look what the AI content team was working on. The AI content team worked on enhancing AI behaviors and adding new features, including improving interactive entity positioning, increasing frequency and duration of AI visits to key usables, enabling AI to use trolleys and lockers, adding leisure behaviors, changing console UI screens based on AI animation, clustering NPCs together, adding security to various game locations, improving usables and interactions for hygiene and medical behaviors, and bringing back the janitor behavior. These updates provide a more engaging and realistic experience for players. Last month, AI features improved the buddy AI and grenade usage in combat, enabling the AI to throw and avoid grenades. They also prototyped humanoid melee combat and created a specialized melee behavior for a specific encounter. Additionally, the team revisited a scenario featuring the Vandul and completed functionality groundwork for a key vehicle. AI Tech made significant improvements to navigation systems, implementing support for overriding agent-type properties for more complex level generation, and introducing Navigation Volume Cost Areas NVCA, that impact navigation mesh generation and dynamic path computation. The team also iterated on completed features, such as NPCs pushing trolleys, and added new functionality to the Apollo Subsumption tool. Additionally, AI Tech completed a pass on recent idle system improvements, allowing for more efficient animation transitions. The Vehicle Feature team made progress on combat AI rework by implementing new behavior trees for different types of combat. Playtesting has shown improved engagement and movement. The team also added support for gas clouds, with AI ships able to detect and prioritize getting out, while some alien ships can freely enter gas clouds as part of their behavior. Animation made progress on AI grenade throwing, NPC healing, and Titan mechanized platform. They also worked on background character animations like moving crates and NPCs attacking players with knives. The team also continued fauna work, delivering blockouts for an alien creature and shooting motion capture for narrative scenes. They worked on bringing more life to the game through facial animations for new content added by narrative. In March, the physics team focused on improving wheeled vehicle handling in different gravity fields and tightening data integrity regarding physical geometry mass. The renderer saw refactoring for Gen 12 and improvements in tessellated object processing, while legacy render code was removed. The team also made improvements to temporal render mode for atmospheric and volumetric clouds. The core engine received substantial performance improvements, including a new custom system allocator and improvements to huge pages support. Work on streaming system improvements and a new memory tracking tool continued as well. The team also spent time supporting Alpha 3.18. Gameplay features made several updates in March, including the implementation of multiple user profiles, separated metadata and global progress, and the in-game option to reload from the last checkpoint. They also started work on a system for remote vehicle control and replaced the old vehicle radar with the new star map, allowing players to zoom and interact the same way as viewing it on the Moby Glass. Additionally, they added personal status, achievements, and homepage apps for MobiGlass, as well as an app link hyperlink for quick access to in-app elements. The Vehicle Features team added space mines, integrated new visual effects for quantum travel, and worked on a new visor UI rendering method. They also progressed with the Wingman Commands feature and radar and scanning tasks. These updates aim to create a more simplified and integrated game system, with a focus on getting the new multifunction display system enabled game-wide for testing. Gameplay Story added a complete maintenance loop for the deck crew with new mocap, allowing AI to use mobile ladders to climb on top of a gladius. They also made smaller updates to idols and pose matching. Scenes in the medbay were finalized, 
enabling characters to interact with props, and a character seamlessly climbed into an Argo ship and flew away. In March, the graphics team completed a mesh generation system for jump point tunnels, made shader improvements, and began unifying static and skinned mesh formats. VFX programming worked on quantum travel and fire effects with visual and performance improvements and improved their editor. Planet Tech worked on improving water simulation quality and building a system for managing and combining simulations. Progress was made on the asteroid system for shaping and distribution. In March, the narrative team conducted an in-depth review of a major section of the game, focusing on revising the script and ensuring the player's motivation aligns with the character's experience for full immersion. They also oversaw a mocap shoot in the UK to capture dynamic conversations and finalized plans to polish the remaining sections in coordination with the design team's level flow adjustments. The team accurately scheduled upcoming mocap shoots, ensuring they have the needed scripts ready in advance. In March, the UI art team developed a new vehicle UI style and puzzle screens, as well as a modular fluff screen system for environmental screens. They also added visual polish to several screens. Meanwhile, UI Tech completed work on AR markers and made incremental improvements to several areas, including text edit boxes, scroll bars, hollow volume interactions, and hyperlinks. The VFX team paid particular attention to large-scale space locations, working closely with the art team to provide several effects, including dangerous-looking lightning and debris from asteroid fields. They also continued to clean up placeholder effects across several locations, swapping them out for bespoke versions that better match the environment. That's it for this time. We hope you like this video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up. We have more Star Citizen content in the works. Make sure to subscribe to Don't Miss Anything. Thanks for watching. See you in the verse and be respectful.